So let's say we start our work on a Monday morning and maybe your office or maybe working from home. It doesn't matter. You start writing your to-do list. Now, those people who are already uh, using a to-do list, good job to you. You are on the right track. And for those who do not use a to-do list till date, I would request you to consider writing a to-do list. So it's a Monday and we start writing our to-do list. Since it's the first day of the week, we have so many tasks at disposal. The more we imagine about the whole week, the number of tasks goes on increasing. From 10 to 50, from 50 to 100, maybe even more, depending on the job role that you're playing in the office or in the business. And these multiple tasks may include tasks such as manager's task, the task that your manager has given you, uh, your own task, uh, depending on your KRA, that is your key responsible areas, other tasks of other people, where they would need your help, they would need your support to complete a task within your team. That would be other task which also has a tag of deadline with it. And then there would be tasks which are emergency or urgent tasks. Other tasks as well such as meetings. Uh, the meeting could be important or it could be unwanted meeting as well. And the higher the number of tasks means the higher the chances of stress, frustration and lower the chances of productivity or work quality. And these factors may also be directly or indirectly responsible or be a result of your appraisals or even in some cases losing a job in the worst case scenarios. And we may think that we can do multitasking to get all the tasks done but trust me when I say that there is nothing such as multitasking. You can either juggle your task from one task to another or you can shift your task from task one to task two but you cannot do multitasking. So in order to bring that productivity of yours, that efficiency in your work, you need to prioritize your task. You need to identify and differentiate which task is important for me, which is urgent for me, which, the, which are the tasks that I can delegate to others and which are the tasks that I need to delete from my to-do list. And that's what I'm going to explain you in this video. Hi, my name is Kaushik Chaki and in this video, I'm going to explain the urgent and important matrix which was introduced by uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower, the 34th President of United States of America and also uh, I'm going to use some inputs given by Dr. Stephen Covey in his book of 7 Habits of Highly Effective People, Habit Number 3, which is putting first things first where he has also mentioned and given his inputs on the Eisenhower matrix on task management. And at the end of this video, I'm also going to share some important tips that would help you manage your task. So let's start right away. So the task management tool that I'm going to help you understand will upgrade your to-do list from this to this. So let me first explain you what this matrix is and how should we use it. Number one thing is we have to create four different quadrants. The first and the third quadrant would have all the urgent tasks. So you can see this arrow. And then the first and the second quadrant, all the tasks which is important to you all these tasks should be put in the first and the second quadrant okay so now quadrant number one this is quadrant number two quadrant number three and quadrant number four now the task which is urgent as well as important to you it's in number one number two will have only those tasks which are important but not urgent Quadrant number three would be the tasks which are urgent but not important to you. It can be important to others though. And quadrant number four is neither urgent nor important. So these are four different quadrants that I'll be explaining you with details in some time. So what Dr. Stephen Covey did is he named these quadrants. Quadrant number one that he named is necessity. This is a quadrant where every task is necessary for you. You cannot skip this. Quadrant number two, 
he named as effectiveness. So all the things that you will do, all the planning and all the improvement, creative work, proactive work, everything comes into quadrant number two. Quadrant number three is distractions. Distractions are those tasks which will generally require your time and urgency, but things are not important for you. You can delegate these tasks to others. And the fourth quadrant is waste. So those tasks which is not important to you, not urgent to you, you can keep it in the waste task or else you can directly delete these tasks. So now let's talk about the first quadrant. I'll be explaining all the quadrants in details with you. Okay, so the first quadrant is called the necessity quadrant and all the tasks which are urgent and important to you comes in this quadrant. So what are the tasks that you can add in this quadrant or you can write down the task in this quadrant are number one crisis. So now when we're talking about the crisis situation, we are not sure of uh, what is going to happen. Maybe your boss uh, wants a report from you right away because he wants to go and sit in a meeting with all the stakeholders or the decision makers, maybe the HODs or maybe the, with the management. So they need a report from you. So in this case, you have to stop all the work that you're doing and you need to create that specific report for your boss. It has a deadline attached with it. Okay, so this would be an example of crisis situation. Other examples of crisis situation would be uh, an earthquake or an accident of your relative where you have to leave everything and you have to go and help that relative of yours because of that accident, right? So it is important and it is urgent, right? So all these tasks would come into the necessity quadrant. Other than the crisis situation there would be meetings now i'm not talking about all the meetings but the emergency meetings this would come into the necessity quadrant when i'm talking about emergency meetings meetings where you have finally got that approval from the decision maker or the stakeholder or the management or your boss to sit down and have a discussion over a process which is uh, not working fine you need to improve that process right away or try to improve the customer experience so for that you need approvals and for that approval you need to commit with your boss you need you need to take the approval or the confirmation from your boss so in that case it would be an emergency meeting where you need to change a process right away then comes the last minute deadlines these are the things that you need to jot down in your necessary list now these could be weekly reports that you need to complete on a specific day uh, maybe as soon as possible now there could be uh, deadlines such as completing a project and giving it to the, uh, the next department that would be working on the same project another example would be replying to the mails of your customers or your boss uh, on a specific task that has been provided to you so these would be the task with deadlines attached to it then there could be some pressing problems uh, within your department or team your or in uh, the organization which needs your support your observations and your implementations as well and there would be unforeseen events the events which we have not planned not thought of but these are some things that just came up and you need to uh, complete them as soon as possible so all these things would come in your necessity now i'm going to talk about the next quadrant which is quadrant number two that is important but not urgent it is called effectiveness so stephen covey has suggested to give most importance to this specific quadrant that is effectiveness this is what he calls it why because all your proactive work your important goals your creative thinking planning and prevention of things relationship building learning and renewable of things and recreation all of these tasks includes in the effectiveness quadrant that is quadrant number two that is things that are important to you but not so urgent to you and you have to focus the most on this quadrant this quadrant that is effectiveness quadrant does not require that urgency but the intensity of your brain processing would increase in this quadrant so always uh, put those things which are important to you but which is not urgent to you 
in this quadrant. Now the next quadrant I'm going to talk about is quadrant number three that is called distraction by Stephen Covey. So what are the things that are going to come into distraction? Tasks such as needless interruptions, unnecessary reports, irrelevant meetings, meetings where uh, even if you're there, it doesn't matter. Even if you're not there, it doesn't matter. Meetings where you just need to go and nod your head like this. So in this case, what you can do is instead of you representing your department, you can ask someone else to represent your department. You can delegate these tasks to them. Then the other tasks which are uh, mentioned in this quadrant would be other people's minor issues, which may not be important to you, but would be important to someone else. And as per them, it would be urgent. That is something that you can add in this quadrant. And then unimportant emails, tasks, phone calls, status, posts, etc. All of these things comes here. Now, uh, you might say that how do we know if the mail or the phone call is important or uh, unimportant? So there would be a lot of mails which are unread in your mailbox. Instead of checking all those mails, what you can do is you can just read the subject line and that would help you understand if this mail is important for me, uh, should I open and spend my time there or should I keep it for the later part? Right? You can do that. And when we're talking about phone calls, uh, phone calls are easy. If it's uh, your boss calling you, you have saved his number, you know that he's calling and you'll have to pick it up. It would go in the first quadrant. That is necessity. Right? But there would be a lot of calls uh, that you may not have saved their numbers. So what I would suggest to you in this case is that's what I do is uh, I have installed true caller. So uh, it is a mobile app. It's free and I'm not doing any promotion, but it's really a, a very good help if you want to save your time. Uh, whenever people call, the true caller uh, would suggest if uh, this is a spam call, like uh, maybe some credit card company is giving you a call each and every day. So uh, it suggests that it's a spam call. You don't have to pick that call. Then it comes into a red color icon or else it suggests the name of the person who's calling you. Right. So it helps you a lot to either pick up that call if it is necessary or you can just delete that call. It would go in quarter number four. Right. So that's how I play and I would suggest you to do the same thing. So this is all about quadrant number three that is called distractions. Now I'm going to shift on quadrant number four that is waste. So all the things which is neither important to you nor urgent to you comes into this quadrant. If you're a beginner, if you're starting with a task management, then you can uh, jot down things here. But slowly and steadily, you don't even have to waste your time writing anything here as well. Just leave it blank after some time means after maybe using it for four to five weeks then you can just simply keep it blank. You'll get the hold of it uh, after you do the practice of this task management tool that I'm saying, right? So what are the things that would come into waste? Things such as tribal work, something that you need to keep on searching to complete a specific task. Then comes your avoidance activities and excessive relaxation, television, gaming, internet, time wasters and gossips. So you can avoid these activities. You can write down in the to do list uh, on the specific quadrant. That is the fourth quadrant. And slowly and steadily, when you start avoiding these activities, you can actually skip writing as well, right? To save your time. So uh, I won't say that, you know, uh, you should not do gaming or you should not serve the internet or uh, the, uh, you should avoid gossips. Yes, you can do it, but for a specific amount of time. Don't waste your time on these things. Gaming is important. I understand it's a stress buster. Even I play gaming. I have a small channel on gaming as well, but it's just for passion. I won't even recommend that channel. So that's all about the whole task management tool. I hope you have understood. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly give you some tips on how to do it. So number one tip is uh, instead of writing the to do list with all the points, what you can do is you can start creating these quadrants and then you should jot down the points which you need to do as per the quadrant. That would help you practice and trust me, maybe after three to four months, you won't even have to write down these things. The second tip is I would suggest is do not directly jump into an app of time management or task management. Start with the basics that is the pen and paper, the old school way, and then try to get a hang of it. And then you can shift to any task management apps. The next tip I'm going to give you is to do this activity, to do this exercise on a weekly basis. 
so once you start doing it on a weekly basis this is very important very easy if you start it on a weekly basis once you've done that once you have done the practice again after three to four months you would be equipped with this tool uh, with the skill and then you don't even have to do it on a weekly basis you can do it in a long term perspective as well Okay, so that's all from my video. I hope you have learned something new and you would be implementing this task management skill and the task management tool that I have explained to you in this video. If you like this video, please do hit that like button that helps the YouTube algorithms uh, for me. That's a help for me. And if you want to help others who would benefit from this video, you can share it with them. That would be a help for the people you already know. So that's all from my end. This is Kaushik Chaki signing out.